Hello. <clears throat> My name is Vicki Ayers, and I am the Minutes Matter QuickBooks and Quoting Tech Support Specialist. I am also certified by Intuit as a QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I've met several of you already on the forum or while doing setup consultations. It's nice to see all of you here, and it's really exciting for me to see how many people are interested in improving the business side of their business. Today's webinar is going to be presented in two general sessions. The first one will run for about a half an hour, and then we will uh, start on the second session. In the first session, I'm going to be demonstrating QuickBooks and Quoting uh, system using the designer style quotes. Many design professionals get their yardage and labor information directly from their fabricator or workroom, and this information can be quickly and easily brought into the quote with no calculation required. So we're going to show some examples of quoting for window treatments, furniture, and um, then in the second session, we're going to show QuickBooks and quoting labor and yardage calculation style quoting. Fabricators find this the, um, absolutely invaluable to use. But even designers, occasionally your workroom isn't able to immediately get you a quote, and you'll want to use this style of quote. So it's good for you to see it and learn how to do it in addition to the quick way. Our industry has its own unique language and kinds of transactions. Minutes Matter recognizes you have some unique challenges when using QuickBooks, and we have created a method that will speed up your quoting and get you back to doing what you all do best. So here we've got an estimate that is open. <clears throat> and the first one we're going to show you, you know, step by step by step, I'll do that in just a minute, is the subcontract window treatment, which is for a, a designer or someone who is selling a window treatment, and you're going to get your labor and uh, yardage information directly from the fabricator. So we have a special group that we use specifically for that. And like I said, we'll go through this kind of quote step by step by step in just a moment. But one of the other examples that I wanted to show you was a um, furniture and delivery uh, quote. So we have a special kind of group. <clears throat> we have lots of different kinds of groups. And uh, some of them are labor and yardage calculating, and then some of them are designed more for designers. So this furniture and delivery kind of group comes up. And we've got all these different items pre-loaded uh, in the group to come up automatically. So it prompts you to remember to charge for all these different things. Now, these groups are set up ahead of time in QuickBooks and Quoting. But of course, you will want to refine them and tweak them so that they work for your business exactly like you like to work. And so all of those things can be fine-tuned by you, even though it comes in in a certain way in QuickBooks and Quoting. And, um, when you purchase QuickBooks and Quoting, you get a free hour of tech support to get it all set up and get your company file set up and get it all integrated into QuickBooks. So that's a really great feature because you can get over that learning curve very, very quickly. Let's take a look at another kind of group or sale that a designer would make. Wallpaper and installation. You can see that we have the wallpaper and the installation and delivery and shipping already loaded into this kind of group. And we're going to talk about groups in a lot more detail today. So if that's a, um, a term that you're not familiar with yet, you will be by the end of this hour. So let's go ahead and start looking at a blank estimate. Now, with everything else that you do in your business, the more things that you systematize, the quicker and more efficient that you will get at doing things. So I've developed a method that I teach called vertical quoting. And it's not about quoting for verticals for the window. It's a method of going into the quote, having a plan and an idea of exactly where you're going to go next. So what we do <coughs> is we work up and down through these columns so that um, we stay in, our mind stays in the same kind of task. And we go from area one, which is the header up here. We fill in all of these fields first, to area two, which is the item column. And we work top to bottom. Then we go to the quantities, and we work top to bottom. And then we go to the description, and we work top to bottom. The last thing we do is work in area five, which is all five of these columns that deal with pricing. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to use my tab key to tab quickly through the fields in the top so I don't forget to deal with anything. I'm going to start typing my customer's name. We have her as practice customer. And then I'm going to choose 
the project or job that we're working on. And then that filled in a lot of things by default because I already had that customer set up. And um, <clears throat> so we're going to tab through all these fields. Estimate active, we want that to be checked. We don't need to do a print preview right now, so I'll just tab past that. We would choose a, a template that's appropriate. I'm going to use the summary style template, this one right here first. And then we uh, would look at the date, and I'm OK with the date, so we'll keep that one. And then it auto advances to the next quote number here. Arrowing or tabbing, you'll see that we're now in the address field. We don't need to change anything there. That was set up by default. And then, of course, we, could, we have our terms set up for this customer, but we could sp pick special terms if we wanted to at this point. Now, tabbing to the next field, some people use a delivery date field for their customer, and some people use it just for themselves. I kind of like having it um, for myself especially because it gives me a date, a target, that I would need to meet if I stayed within a certain number of weeks out on my job. So if I were going to put an anticipated delivery date in here of six weeks out, <clears throat> I can very quickly hit my K key. That's K for like the K at the end of the word week. And that will take me to the end of this week. Now to indicate six weeks out, if I wanted to stay within that time parameter for delivery, I would hit my K key six more times. Watch what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't that cool? So you can use hotkeys like that, and we help teach you how uh, all about the different hotkeys that you can use in fields like that. Now I'm going to tab again into the first field in the body of the estimate, calling this Area 2. And we're going to work up and down deciding what we want to sell to our customer. But I call it the most important field in the entire quote because here is where we're going to decide what kind of group that we want to use to bring into this quote, what kind of quote we want to make. Now in your item list, in QuickBooks and quoting, you have an item list that has over somewhere between six and 700 items in it. And if you were going to scroll up, scroll down, scroll up when you were in your quote, trying to find all the different items that you wanted to use in your quote, it would take you a really long time. And that item list is represented right here with that drop down arrow. See? Just lots of things to sell. So we have special kinds of items that are called group items. And it's kind of like having a basket full of items. We've already put all of these things into the basket that would be the most likely things you would use or sell when you did this particular kind of quote. So we've named all the groups to start with G. And the G dash groups, see we've got some other ones down here called GP dash. We'll talk about those in a minute. But the G dash groups, when we type G dash, we can choose one of those kinds of groups to do a certain kind of quote. Now this time, we're going to choose the subcontract window treatment group. So when we chose that group, it brought in the name of the group, and then all of the things that were preloaded in it for us to use. Now you won't use all of those every time, and you'll use some different things from time to time, but at least it prompts you to not forget to charge for the inner lining or to charge for the lining or to get all of the hardware items that you need on there. So we're going to start at the top. We chose our group. And then the vertical quoting method is to use the arrow key on your keyboard to go down and decide, am I going to keep it? Am I going to delete it? Or am I going to change it to a similar item? Well, in this case, I want to keep that item, because that's going to be the, where we put in our workroom um, labor charge that they have told us they would charge for this particular product that we're doing. We're going to arrow down. We do want to keep the main fabric, because we're going to sell some fabric. We do want to keep a contrast fabric, because we're going to have some banding on these draperies. But I don't really need two contrast fabrics this time. So I'm just going to hold down my Control key and hit Delete one time. Control, Delete. Removed one thing from the basket, one line at a time. Now I do want to have some trim. But in this case, I'd like to be a little more specific. So it's a changing to a similar item. When you hit the drop-down arrow, 
you can see that you're already in that area of the item list. You don't have to scroll all over looking for the tassel fringe. It's right there. So we've just changed to a similar item. Arrowing down, do I want to keep it? Do I want to delete it? Do I want to change to a similar item? I think I'll change it to a similar item. I just want a traversing rod this time. So to change to a similar item, we hit the uh, drop down menu. And this puts us into the hardware items that are in our list. And I know we need to scroll up just a little bit to find the Kirsch Super Finds. I want one 100 inches wide. So we'll choose this one. So we decided to keep it, but change it to a similar item. So we used the drop down arrow. Now arrowing down, I don't need the finial anymore. So I'm going to control delete. I don't need the rings anymore, control delete. No brackets, control delete. Now again, I need to decide, do I want to keep this lining? Do I want to uh, delete it? Or do we want to change it to another similar item? Well, I think I'll just switch to a white color in the, the lining. I'm already in that area, that aisle of the you know, item list. And so I can just very easily choose the cotton sateen white lining this time. Arrowing down, again, I'd like to have a white interlining. Drop down arrow, and we choose the bleached white interlining. Now arrowing down, I'm going to charge a rendering fee, a measure fee, and an installation fee. And I'm going to estimate the shipping for this job. Well, have we covered everything? Is this everything that we want to sell? We just need to think about that at this point. Is there anything else I need to charge for? Well, let's say that we wanted to add some buttons to the, um, <coughs> to the um, pleats on this particular drape. I would come back up here into the labor area of this quote, because I want to add some buttons to that. So I'm going to um, hit Control Insert. That's the opposite of Control Delete. And I'm going to type 950. And then I'm going to choose my buttons here from the surcharge list. 950 just took me, took me to the place in the item list that I could choose the buttons. I could have just started typing buttons, too, and that would have helped me bring it up. Now, we've decided, working from the top to the bottom, what are we going to sell? The group brought things in by autom automatically by default. And we decided what we wanted to keep, what we wanted to delete, what we wanted to um, change to a similar item. Then we went to the uh, drop down arrow. And is there anything else we wanted to charge for this time? And that was all we needed to do in area two, just deciding what are we selling in this particular quote. Now we're going to go to the quantities. And we're going to work from the top to the bottom, again, calculating all of our quantities. And it's very easy if you've gotten a lot of your numbers from your fabricator. So there's one labor item. And then we're going to charge for, um, let's say, 18 different buttons. And the fabricator told us to get 21 yards of fabric, 4 yards of contrast fabric, 7 yards of trim. We're going to get one rod. We're going to match our lining with our fabric up there. And we're going to match our inner lining with that. One render fee, one measure fee. And if our, we, I know that our treatment is going to be 100 inches wide. So if we're going to charge by the linear foot for that, we can use a little calculator that's right there in that field. If I type 100, and then there's four keys that tell QuickBooks that we want to use the calculator. Shift 8 for the asterisk is time. The slash underneath your question mark is divide. And then, of course, there's, a, there's the plus and minus key that's up in the upper right-hand corner normally of your keyboard. So we're going to divide right now and use the slash. See how it opens up the calculator? And we're going to type 12. And then we're going to hit Enter. And we get a, rounding, a number that needs to be rounded. So it's 8.33333. And while it's still blue and highlighted, it's very easy to just change that to a 9 by typing 9. So we're going to charge for 9 linear feet. Now, that handles area 2. Can you see how easy that is when you know somebody else is giving you your numbers? You're just kind of plugging them in at this point. But now we need to describe everything. So our workroom, we're, we need to tell them that it's going to be 100 finished width by 97 finished length pinch pleat draperies with button buttons on pleats lined interlined 
one inch banding on lead edge with tassel fringe on banding edge. So we're just describing our treatment. Now this little note here about where to enter the total in, I think that's pretty obvious at this point. We've read it now, so we'll just remove that. It's not necessary anymore. And we've deleted that number. I'm just going to change my columns up here just a little bit, shorten things up. That gets some, almost everything on this one line. Now, we're going to describe the rest of this uh, treatment by saying the buttons will be uh, number 35 um, covered with pink con contrast fabric. So the more information that you put here, the easier it will be later to look at it and know exactly what your plan was. Now for main fabric, we're going to say that this was Eastland, and it was red, and it is um, coming from Casimir. And then we'll make those some notes on our contrast fabric. It is number one, two, three, four, uh, gold. Oh, I said it was pink, didn't I? Oh, that's going to be lovely draperies. And then we'll say that that is coming from Fabricut. Now, for the tassel fringe, we would want to do the same thing. We're going to indicate that that is um, MN-678 in multi from the key. See what I'm doing here? I'm just customizing this quote so that it looks like and sounds like the job that I'm doing so that when you come back to look at it, there's no questions what your plan was. Now, arrowing down, we don't need to say anything more about the rest of these item descriptions until we get to this description right here. Because we chose a G dash group, that G dash indicates that this is going to be a summary style quilt, quote. And the customer is going to see this description and the grand total. They're not buying fabric and contrast fabric and fringe and a rod. They're buying a finished window treatment. So if I hit the print preview here, close the spelling, you can see that they will see this description and a grand total. It's a summary style quote. Now when we <coughs> come in here, we want to um, really jazz up this description. We're going to say that it's for living or oh, dining room. Dining room, pinch, pleat, draperies on patio doors. Um, and, and then you just want to kind of uh, romance the treatment a little bit. It's going to be embroidered silk fabric with contrast buttons, blah, 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 blah. So you'll have to, you know, that's what you, you guys don't really want to watch me type. You want to watch me demonstrate things. So I'm not going to finish that up. But I will show you how that when you go to print this for your customer, they will see, that's the description that they're going to see with the grand total. Now there is another kind of group that you can use. We give you the choice between both things in our quoting system. You can create summary style quotes, or you can create uh, detail style quotes. Depending on your customer, you can decide which you want at that time. So um, it's when you choose the group, you choose a G dash if you want summary style, and you choose a G P dash, P standing for print item detail. And we'll take a look at one of those in just a moment also. But you can see how um, you've put all these things in, you've customized the descriptions, and then that's what the customer will see is this description. And that is area four. So now we're going to move to area five which is these last five cost columns over here, and we're just going to adjust all of our cost for these uh, items. So you talk to the, um, the fabricator, and they said it would be $475, so you type that one in. And you've already set up your pricing for buttons uh, with that person, so they're about 50 cents a piece cost. And you checked on the price of your fabric. It was $27.25, arrow down. The contrast fabric was only $12. We got a really good buy on that. The tassel fringe, however, was $35, so we're going to change that price. And we checked the price on our rods, and they are now $32.50.
And then the lining, the inner lining, we already had set up. And the rendering fee came in at the price that we wanted. And the measure, the linear foot. And now we'll estimate our shipping charges. Now the shipping charges, I would kind of look at what I had to have shipped in. And I'd say, well, that's going to be about $45 this time. And there you go. You've got all your cost column adjusted. Now the thing that's great is that this markup number is set up when you're setting up your item the first time, or you know, QuickBooks and quoting will default to 100%. You could change it if you wanted to always have this be 75%. But in the quote, one at a time, you've got total control. So you could say, well, in this case, I think I will mark that up for 75% because my market will bear it. And then we're going to arrow down, and yep, that's OK. Actually, I think I could get 125% on that one. See how you can control the markups, and you can adjust your markups trying to get this number where you want it to be according to your client's budget. Or you can come over here and adjust the totals. Let's say that you thought, well, I want to just get $900 for that. So 900 Well, look you there. QuickBooks calculated the markup for us. And if we came in here and said, well, I think that'll be worth $35, QuickBooks, again, calculated the markup for us. So once you get your cost established here, and you already established your quantities over on this side, you can then start adjusting markups and totals so that you can get your number where you need it to be. Now let's take a look at our print preview on that. There we go. We've got a summary style, subcontracted window treatment, where you get your numbers directly from your fabricator. Lee or Anna, Anna's with us today to help with the questions. Is there anything that anybody had a question about at this point that I can clarify? Uh, yes, Vicki. Uh, we have someone that would like you to show one more time how you made the columns smaller and larger. It's the little things that are cool, it is isn't the, it? It is the little things. <laughs> when you're in, a, in a, a screen where you've got a header like this, almost always you can come up in here and see where you've got this faint line right there next to the C in cost. And when I get my cursor over it and I get that little crosshairs, that means that I can click down right there and I can drag those columns however goofy I want them. But when you're working in your item list and working down through those, instead of hovering to see what everything is, it's really nice to just kind of change that column up and work around in there. And then when you're done working there, you can kind of slide it over and um, you know get your columns set like you like. Now, one reason that I really like to get everything on one line here is because it makes my letter function work nicer. So I've got all of this on one line now. And I'm going to go, I would like a detail copy for my file. It's OK to give my customer a summary style, but I don't really want to open up QuickBooks every time um, I, I want to see how I got to a certain number or how much fabric did I have there. So if you come up to Letters, and then you choose in QuickBooks and Quoting, this little template is already customized for you. So you choose that one and then say Next. And you can ignore these, because we don't really use those fields in this template. And then you say Next. Now QuickBooks is going out onto my computer and finding my Word program and opening it up. And it put everything that was on my table of the, the quote. Remember over here? Everything that's right here in this screen, it popped it over here onto a letter. And the letter has been set up so that it just kind of um, uh, it has the, the basic stuff that I need. And it's in a table format. Now remember, though, that these are cost numbers. So you want to be careful that you know this isn't something that you let anybody have. But um, it's great for your file to keep for your reference. And um, it gives you a nice little detailed column, copy. The, the problem is it's a workaround. And it's not you know super perfect. But QuickBooks does not allow us to toggle between showing detail, not showing detail. Once you choose G dash or GP dash, you have chosen a path, and you have to go down it. 
Otherwise, you have to start over. So you want to choose a G dash or GP dash when you're uh, thinking about whether your client needs to see all the detail or you want to have a summary style. So let's um, let's hit our previous button. I'll show you the GP dash uh, quote. I got one here. I know I do. There's one. So here's a GP dash one in the labor and uh, calculation style quote. And so when we hit the print preview here, you can see customers going to see all the quantities, all the description, all the rates in the total. And so that it, now this, custom, this template hasn't been customized real pretty yet. But um, that's what uh, your customer is going to see uh, with that kind of group. They're not getting a summary style anymore. They're going to see all the different line items and how much uh, and everything was. So that's the difference between a G dash group and a GP dash group. And we'll see that again when we go to do the, um, the next style of quote where we do labor and yardage calculation. Are there any other questions, Anna, before I go on to that demonstration? Pretty much covered it. They, there are questions, but you're going to be covering those, so we'll wait till you get to them. All right, I'll do that. So here we are in an empty estimate again, but this time we would like to um, calculate our labor and our yardage for this particular job. So again, we're going to do area one to area five because we've got a system, and systems make us fast and efficient. And so we're going to uh, tab our way through the top, choosing our customer. And we're going to tab to all the different fields deciding what's OK. Well, that's good. We want that one. And then the date's OK. The quote number's all right. My address is OK. The terms, let's just change those terms at this particular time. We would like her to give her net 60. She told us she was going to get a big check later on, but you know she'll pay us, and we're pretty, good. She, pretty sure she will. Now, I'm going to hit T to take that delivery date back to today. The delivery date went to today with the T, another cool hotkey. I'm going to take it to the end of this week, and then I'm going to hit it six more times. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we deliver within six weeks, it'll be May the 22nd. Now, arrowing down, I'm going to choose G dash this time, and I'm going to choose the G dash drapery group. Well, that group is already preloaded with these things. They're the most commonly used things. A labor item for the pinch plate, labor item for trim, banding, inner lining, to work with inner lining, <coughs> and we can actually you know, calculate all those in a minute. So now again, using my arrow down key, I'm going to work myself from the top to the bottom, deciding what to sell this customer. That's all we're deciding is, what do we want to sell? Well, we do want to sell some pinch pleat um, labor. We, oh, no, this is not good. That item has been switched up. See that, the yardage? has been taken out of that item, so I'm going to switch to a uh, pencil pleat drapery. Because this is the way the item should come in. This particular company file must have been edited to show somebody something in a class. So we're going to arrow down from the pencil pleat. That's the kind of item we want to sell today. And then we're going to uh, sell a trim, adhesive, trim uh, labor item. And then we're going to sell a banding labor item. We want some banding on these. They are going to be inner lined, so you have to charge extra for your, uh, using the inner lining product. We do want to sell a main fabric. We want to sell a contrast fabric for that banding. And we're going to sell some trim. Now, <clears throat> this is for selling the actual trim product. This is for applying the trim. That's what we're charging for the uh, surcharge for applying the trim. That's the difference between those two items. Now, we're going to hit the drop down arrow here so that we can be more specific and choose the tassel fringe. Now arrowing down, we've got a hardware miscellaneous item. Again, that should not have been, that's not the one that will normally come in. But let's try um, finding the Kirsch Superfine. There it is. And we've changed it to a different item. Now arrowing down, we want to change to a white lining. And arrowing down, we'll change to a white inner lining. 
and arrowing down, we're going to charge a render fee, we're going to charge a measure fee, and we're going to charge an installation fee. And we're going to charge estimated shipping on the job. So we've just worked our way from the top to the bottom, deciding what we're going to sell to this particular customer. Now in this case, I think we'll add another installation item. This, this installation is going to need a really tall ladder, and my installer charges extra for get bringing his tall ladder. The opposite of control delete is control insert. And I can see, because of this item right here, 600, that all my installation items will be in the 600 area of the list. And there we go. That brings up the 600 area, so it's really easy for me to add the ladder charge. And there we go. Now, um, if we go to the quantity area, let's figure out how many widths of draperies. We know that these are 100 inches wide. So I'm going to start out with 100 in my field and use the calculator. And I'm going to divide by, or I'm sorry, 100 times the fullness factor. And the pencil pleat ta drapery that I'm using, and I'm going to use a tape on that, and the factor is uh, two and a half times full. Well, we know that because we would normally do this over on the side of our desk on a little legal pad, that we would take the size of the treatment, we'd multiply it by the fullness factor, and then, of course, we would divide by the width of our fabric. Because what we're trying to calculate here is how many widths are going to be in this drapery. So we would divide, then, by 54, because that's the width of our fabric. And then we hit Enter, and it tells us, oh, that's 4.6 widths of material. Now, you know that we're always going to round up on the widths. So we would take that number, and while it's still blue, you can just quickly hit 5. And that um, extra that we had in that, you can use that for your um, <coughs> uh, return side hems and overlap if you want. But I might actually round that up one more number to six if it were in my uh, studio. Because I want to make sure that I've got enough widths calculated that if I decide that I want to pleat on the pattern or, you know, in a pencil pleat you wouldn't do that. But um, you might, you, you've got to think about whether you want to round up any more than that. Now the trim uh, uh, labor item is being calculated by the inch. And I want that to go down to the leading edge. So I know that in this case I've got two leading edges. And I'm going to multiply that by how long the draperies are, which is 97 inches in this case. So I type 97 and hit Enter. Now arrowing down, the banding is going in the same place, so I can just type 194. And to add the inner lining labor per yard, that's per yard of fabric. So let's go ahead and calculate the yards of main fabric. Now this is the line right here that pertains to our job today, because they're 100, they're uh, 90, I'm sorry, or 96 inches finish line right there. That's what I said, right? Now, the yardage information in there is what we're going to need to use. So we really don't need to see any of this now. And we don't need to see any of this. We'll just get that out of our way. Now, we know that our fabric is 27 inches repeat. So this is the number right up here in the yardage prompt that we need. This number in the yardage prompt is for a solid or virtually zero inch repeat. The second number is always for a 27 inch repeat or less. So if we come into this field and we tighten it per width, that yardage number, a six, because we've got six widths, and we multiply it by three, it means that we need 18 yards. That means we need to charge for 18 yards of inner lining labor per yard. And then the contrasting fabric is for the banding. And this banding information right here means this. We will always assume that you want that banding on the lead edge in a drapery panel. We will also assume that you want it to be seamless. So we're going to tell you how much yardage it's going to take to do up to 10 panels or 10 leading edges seamless. And that would take three yards. We'll come right here into the contrast fabric and type of three. The, same, the number for the tassel fringe, again, is up here. How much trim? Again, we're going to assume that you want it on the lead edge of a drapery. And uh, we've calculated that it will take three yards. So um, <clears throat> per width. 
So we could use the calculator, but probably we can figure in our head that we got two leading edges, so that's six yards of trim. Now right here, we got uh, the traverse rod. We know that we need one. We know that we need 18 yards of lining, 18 yards of inner lining, one render fee, one measure fee, one ladder fee, and the 100 inches of the drapery, it's, that's how wide it is, divided by 12 for the running foot. Enter, round it up to 9, and you're done with the quantities. So now you're ready to go on and just make all of those descriptions like we did prior. 96, whoops, 96 finished length. And um, we're going to come down here and describe that the trim is a tassel fringe along lead edge banding. And then the banding is going to be one inch banding set in one inch from lead edge. So you're just you know telling uh, the quote or putting into the quote what you intend to do. And again, we would do want to do the same thing for the main fabric, the contrast fabric, and the tassel fringe that we did on the other quote, where we added all of those uh, particulars about the the, the uh, fabric. Um, but I, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip that here, and we'll go on down. And there's really not much that needs to be customized as far as the description until, of course, you get to this um, description at the bottom, because that's what our customer is going to see, right? So. Um, you would want to customize that, telling about the fabric and all the details and what kind of drapers they're getting and how many windows and so on and so forth. Then, of course, we get to area five, which is this five columns at the end. And you want to run down through double checking your um, cost numbers. And um, all of these look pretty good. Until we get to the fabric, we need to fine tune those numbers with our actual fabric. And this one will do 1250. And then we've got tassel fringe that was 27. And then our rods we checked with 3250 this time. And then the cotton sateen lining was already set up. You would want the inner lining already set up, the render fee, the measure fee, the ladder fee per linear foot. And the shipping charges will estimate at $55. And so once you work through your cost column in you know area five back here, then it's time to start tweaking your markups or changing your totals so that your markup calculates, and then you get your number where you want it to be down here. So that's how fast and how easy it is to create a labor and yardage calculation style quote because you've already got everything all set up in your item list to use. And this, again, is a summary style quote. So this one right here, um, because you've got the group already created, it defaulted and, and told you, kind of prompted you to charge for different things. You changed all your descriptions here, and you set up all your quantities, and then you were ready to work with pricing. Vertical quoting, when you work through column work from the top to the bottom, your brain likes to stay in a certain kind of task. So if you're over and over and over again deciding what to sell, what to sell, what to sell, as you work through the item column, you'll get very fast and very efficient because you don't get sidetracked thinking about pricing at that point. So um, that is the labor and yardage calculation style. Do we have any questions, Anna? Vicki, one thing is they would like you to clarify a little bit more about the two-inch banding or it's three oh. yards equals ten panels. Mm -hmm. This number, if you're if you're looking at the yardage information in an item, we set up each one of those numbers to by default to work kind of the same way every time you see it. If you see these two numbers in parentheses, however, this particular product is being sold, which in this case is a width of material. So pinch pleat drapery labor is sold by a width of material. So for each width of material, you would need three yards if the fabric is a solid or virtually zero inch repeat. You know, some of those little patterns that got like an eighth inch repeat, they'll tell you. Well, that would, you know, use this number. For a 27 inch repeat or less, you use this number. And that's a safe 
uh, repeat number to use 97% of the time. 97% of the time, if you have some kind of special fabric that's hand blocked and it's 36 inch repeat, then of course you would have to calculate your own cut length for that particular special situation. But most of the time, you'll be able to use this number right here for 27 inch repeat or less per width of material. And then again, like I said, the trim number right here. If you're in a drapery panel, we will assume that you want it down the leading edge. And that's how many yards you would need per leading edge. The banding number, which Anna was just asking about, <coughs> makes a couple of different assumptions. It assumes that you want the banding on the leading edge. And it also assumes that you would like it to be uh, seamless. So you could make up to a 2-inch banding for 10 panels or 10 leading edges with that 3 yards of fabric, which means that you got 3 yards of fabric and it runs you know, the long way, 108 in, eight inches. And you could get those great big long cuts of fabric across that of about 5 to you know, 5.4 inches wide, which once you fold it up and everything, you could make up to 2 inch banding. Now if your banding is only 3 quarters of an inch, of course, you could get it for a lot more panels than that. But you could make up to two inch banding on the leading edge seamless. Those are your assumptions with three yards of fabric for 10 different leading edges. So let's say that you were doing um, a big conference room in a hotel. And you're quoting out the number of widths of draperies you're going to have in this whole room all at one time. And you were going to have 22 different leading edges in that uh, conference room, well, you would need you know, three times that much yardage. You would need the yard nine yards if you were going to do two-inch banding. Because uh, the first three yards would cover the first 10 leading edges, and the next three yards would cover the next 10 you know, leading edges, and then you would need another three yards to do that last little bit. So that number can float up and down a little bit based on how wide the banding is really going to be and how many panels that you need to cover with that seamless cut. Did that cover it, Anna? It was great, Vicki. OK. Are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, they still don't totally understand how you use the calculator in the quantity and the different areas. Okay. All right. Let's. Um, Let's do, I know that this says 100 finished width over here, but let's do some other kinds of uh, width calculations so that you can see it. Now, the calculator is built into QuickBooks right here in this field, this little box and square here. And QuickBooks knows to bring the calcula calculator up or to turn it on whenever I type a number, like 100. Now let's do uh, 215, big drapery. They're 215 inches wide. And we want to know how many widths you know, will cover that based on a fullness factor. Now QuickBooks will open up that calculator if I use one of four different keys. The Shift 8, or that little star, the asterisk. It's hard for me to say the word asterisk sometimes, so I say star. And uh, that means times to QuickBooks. So when I hit the times key there, it opens up the calculator. Now I want to multiply that by my fullness factor. Now these are going to be sheer draperies. And so I want a little more fullness to those. So instead of using a 2 and a half times fullness factor, I'm going to take that 250 running in inches of draperies all the way across there. And I'm going to multiply it by a 3 times fullness factor this time. But we know that um, you uh, have to divide then by the width of your fabric. And this is a very odd sheer fabric. It's only 48 inches wide, which is you know, unbelievably narrow for a shear, but we're just pretending here. And so you would know that if you take the 215 running inches of draperies there, and you multiply it by the fullness factor, and then you divide, the divide is the slash key underneath the question mark on your you know, keyboard, that we want to divide by our fabric width. And in this case, it's 48 inches. So 250 running inches times 3 times the fullness factor divided by 48 inch fabric. 
those are all a bunch of weird, odd numbers, but it will give us what we need for the number of widths of fabric that it would take to cover that window treatment, that window. And then when I get those parameters all set in there with my keyboard, I just hit Enter. And that gives us 13.4375. Now I'm looking at that number, and I'm thinking, well, it's a little less than 13 and a half. But um, I want to, you know, I think if I just round up to 14, I could fool around with my fullness a little bit and do that with 14 widths of fabric. So I'm going to say 14. And then it wipes out the blue. Now let's say that we only wanted our trim along the bottom of that drapery. Really narrow fabric with trim along the bottom of shears. We're not making very pretty stuff today. Now um, we want it along the bottom edge of this drapery. Well, we know that it's 215 inches of drapery. And we multiply that by 3 times fullness. And so we're going to have that many running inches, right, all the way along the bottom of that drapery. So when I hit Enter here, it's going to be 645 inches. So even though this is set up to do, you know, be by the running inch, we can decide if we're running it down the lead edge or if we're running it all the way along the bottom. So the 645 is, is you know, we would come back in here along our description and say that it's running along the bottom edge of the drapery now. But the thing that to remember is that the calculator is in this number field. Let's say that we were over here in this number field. And we said, well, I want to, my cost to be about half that. So if I hit the divide key right there in that field with a number already in it, we go divide by 2, and we hit Enter and it just divides it. Any place that there is a number, if we say we want to multiply this one by 1.25, adding on about 25%, there we've got that. So you can, let's say that we wanted to add $3 to this, plus $3, and you've got 30. Now, we, we don't want to change that. Okay. So the calculator will work in any number field, has all kinds of uses. When you're in a bill or a check or something, and you're just trying to subtract something from something else, and you, know, you can do it right there in the field that's on the screen in QuickBooks. It is a very, very cool feature to learn to, um, um, to use. It, it, it will it'll be something you use over and over and over again in lots of different transactions. Anna? I have one more question. Uh, they're okay. wanting to know that if they have got the G codes, but they don't have the GP codes, how do they okay. go about getting those? All right. If you have in your item list, let's go there again. Down here at the bottom is where all of your groups are kind of you know listed together. And see how I've got uh, G, I've got one GP code up here. Like I said, I was demonstrating something to somebody. You've got all these G dash codes, but now you want to have these GP ones that print the item detail. Once you have your G dash ones all set up just like you like, like let's go in and fix this G dash drapery one that I said had a few errors. Like this one uh, right here. Let's change that out with the, um, with the pencil pleat to come in by default. So I just changed that group to have a pencil pleat in there instead. We had a hardware one down here that was wrong. Oh, don't send. Oh, don't shut me down. I must have clicked too many times, and QuickBooks closed on me. But we will open it right back up very quickly. QuickBooks always opens the last company file that you had open by default. So here it is. And then we're going to go back into our item list. And we'll go back down to the groups. And since it didn't like what I was doing there before, we're going to do something different. We will go to the uh, G-Balance one. 
And we want to create a GP dash balance one. And I'm going to right click on this one and I'm going to delete that item because I want to make it again. So now I want a GP dash balance one. So I know that I have this one exactly like I like it. All of the items that I want in there are the ones that I want. But I want one that prints now. So right click and duplicate the item. Creates one exactly like the other one. We can't have something with the same name. So QuickBooks puts in dupe just so that it has a unique name. But we want our unique name to be GP. So I duplicated it. And then I changed the name to be GP-Balance. Now, the P does not make it print. This button makes it print. So now I have a group exactly like my G-Balance one. Only I've said, uh, this time I want the GP one, the new one I just made, I want it to print all the items in the group. And then we say OK. And that's how easy it is if you have 2009 QuickBooks or newer. doesn't matter if it's Pro or Premier. It just needs to be 2009 or newer. If you don't have 2009, you will have to, um, and we're, I'm going to drag that back down into the area it needs to be like that by grabbing the little, um, the little diamond there, and I can drag it down. If you have 2009 or, or if you have 2008 or older, you will want to right click, choose new, and you'll have to set up your group just like the other one was set up. You'll have to give it a name, give it a description, click on the print, and then load up the items that you want into the group. Now, I, on that note, I will say that 2007 QuickBooks is, is set to be sunsetted in, in May of this year, meaning that QuickBooks will no longer support it with any updates. They won't fix little you know, tweaky problems. If you call in for support, they're not going to want to talk to you about it. So, it's really important that you get those updates from QuickBooks on a periodic basis. That's where they fix things that are funny. And if you're in 2007, past May, you will no longer get those anymore. And it's, it's really important that you upgrade to uh, either 2010 or, you know, if you want to live on the edge, you could wait until 2011 came out. But um, I, I really wouldn't recommend it. We recommend that you update your, your QuickBooks program every two to three years. And if you're in 2007, you were really set to upgrade with 2010. 2011 will come out sometime in the fall. They never give us a firm date because, like every you know software developer, they're still working out the bugs in it. And so, um, uh, 2010 would be a good upgrade for you because it will get you a lot of those features, like the one I just showed you about duplicating items that came out in 2009. And then there's some other very cool things in 2010. Anna, we're very, getting very close to the end of our hour. Is there anything else that people would like to see before we um, close today? No, you've covered it all. Well, I hope so. <laughs> and I know that there's, n there's no way that I can cover everything that everybody wants to see in an hour. So remember that you can always go to, if you're a QuickBooks and Quoting customer, you can always go to the forum to ask questions or search for answers there. And that's always free. If you ever want to, um, you can always email me at Vicki, V-I-C-K-I-E, at minutesmatter.com. That's always free. I'll answer your questions, at least the ones that I can by email. And then uh, you can always order extra tech support time directly, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, very similar to the, the way that we did this go-to meeting today, by calling uh, the office or ordering it online on the website. So um, we... Uh, have the next free webinar will be on May the 5th at 1 o'clock Eastern Time again. And there's also a studio webinar coming up this month on April 14th. Again, it's at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. And uh, I know that you'll want to take advantage of uh, those, both of those demonstrations coming up. And if you have any questions about QuickBooks and quoting or about your QuickBooks, uh, feel, feel, feel free to contact me. I'd love to help you. Thank you, Anna and Lee, both for your help today. I really appreciate everyone who's come in to learn something today. And I, I hope that 
I've made QuickBooks easier for you somehow today. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.